do that as we head over to the YouTubes. And we do that so that. Hello, everybody. How are you? Yeah. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It looks like we're going straight over to YouTube. So great to see everybody there on YouTube and great to see you here on Zoom. And so thankful that you are with us today. Uh, it's Ask Me Anything with Robert Hollis for uh, Saturday, March 23rd. It's noon p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern or whatever time it is you happen to be watching because you're watching either live right now or recorded. Doesn't matter. You're watching. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you very, very much much great to see the smiling faces and ears on as well gee i wonder jody what that's in relation to huh <laughs> rabbit rabbit no um so before we get started a couple of announcements uh to make congratulations again subscribers viewers for helping us to grow our channel uh we are now up to 7073 subscribers on our way to 7,100 and more. Thank you so much for your help because without you, we couldn't be doing this. We wanna spread the word, we want ears to hear uh, and you can help us by doing that, by continuing to spread the word with not only these videos, but also the shorts from YouTube as we share them with everybody else. Um, the other thing I wanna uh, share, there was a person who came on in the Zoom chat by the name of Yaya. And I am so sorry, Yaya, if you are part of our community, I just did not see a last name. And we need to, just because we've had issues in the past, and that's the only reason why I'm bringing this up to people here with the YouTubes and everything like that. Please make sure that you include on your display name when you're in Zoom, your last name. It is very, very important. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, if we booted you by mistake, very sorry. Please watch us on YouTube. And then next time we will catch up with you. So, oh, yeah, yeah, is Jody's new affiliate. Okay. I am so sorry, Jody. Please share with Yaya um, that uh, next time we'll catch her. Okay. We just need a last name uh, just to protect ourselves because we've had uh, attacks before. Ola, we know who he is, even though he's a one-namer. I don't think we're going to have any issues with him at all, right? <laughs> Ola's, like, Ola's like Bono or or, uh, or Oprah, you know what I mean? He's, he's that one, Orla from Sweden, he's, he's got that one-name popularity. Exactly. So we appreciate you, Ola, and thank you so very much. Because it's Ask Me Anything, you get to ask a question of Robert Hollis, our amazing AMA gentleman. Uh, very simple to do. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and ask your question in the chat and we will read it on your behalf. You can also do the same here in Zoom if you're watching us on Zoom, if you do not wish to ask Robert personally. But you can ask Robert personally by raising your hand like John Tier just did. So he will be our first person up when we call upon people to talk with Robert. Very simple to do. Put your cursor, if you're watching on Zoom and Coach Bob, uh, put your cursor on the middle of the screen on Zoom then uh, you'll find a button, some buttons on the bottom. Click on the reactions button. If you do not see the reactions button on the bottom, click on more and then reactions will appear to the side. Click on that and then click on raise hand. We will call on you in the order that we see your hand being raised. That's how simple it is. And you get to talk to, directly to Robert Hollis. That's why it's called AMA with the A Amazing. Robert Hollis. All right. And finally, before we get things rolling, uh, a quote that Robert shared earlier today. I'd love to share these quotes with you, uh, a meme that he posts on his Facebook. Um, and it's so true when you think about it. Here's the definition of worry. To use your imagination to create circumstances you do not want. See also useless nice. all right that being said let's get this thing going ladies and gentlemen we are here because of a gentleman who has helped create 67 millionaires he helps people become better 
or excuse me, gooder and gooder every single day. And he likes to help you get gooder and gooder every single day. So let's get started with the A amazing Robert Hollis. Craig, thank you very much. Again, the hostess with the mostess. Uh, I love all the things that are that Craig does. He makes, uh, as you guys watch me talk, he's going to be constantly posting resources and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, the couple of, uh, uh, I just appreciate him so much. So let's give a hand at Craig. Um, just amazing. And then a couple of shameless plugs here really quickly is, um, it's funny. I, I did an interview with Ola uh, May Meyer uh, and, um, you know, uh, Craig will make sure that he posts it, but it's like, um, man, I'm getting a lot of people going, wow, that was, that was amazing. So, you know, I, I'd ask you guys to go out, not only click on it, watch it, uh, make some comments or whatever, but also, uh, do some subscribing and, 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 uh, and stuff on Ola's channel. It's, uh, I think it's the second video that he put up, uh, the other one he put up years ago. And, and, uh, so yeah, it's going to be really, really nice to, to, to help him do that. And, um, the other thing that I would really like to bring up to you guys is, uh, just a simple statement as I continue to push in to help people immediately get results. You know what I mean? That is what the Imaginator program is all about. And we're going to be doing that again tomorrow. Of course, we record them. Uh, people can join and go check it out. And I'm getting this honed down because if you don't have any imagination of, of a new wonderful becoming, you becoming something better, if you don't have that imagination, you're never going to go into action. And the other thing that's really amazing is people that have an incredible imagination doesn't need to figure out how to do something. So we are talking about this in the podcast. Uh, and that will be released, uh, what, in a, a couple hours, Craig? Yeah, actually, I think we're going to release it around 3 p.m. today, Pacific time. Okay. And so listen to this one part, um, whether you believe this or not, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And so that's why you can read things over and over and over or hear somebody say something over and over and over. And then one moment, bam, it like not only changes you, but it but it's like you can't go back. And I know this is a drastic one, but, you know, Jody's got the, the the ears on. And so, you know, one day someone says, hey, um, do you really know what Easter's all about? And it's like, yeah, it's a celebration. And, and you know, we hide, you know, plastic eggs with money in them. And we, ha ha you know, put candy around. And, uh, you know, it's all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, you give your definition of what Easter is. And then people go, whoa, whoa. Because there's other people that have radical definitions of Easter, right? So the biggest thing I want you to really uh, uh, think about is I believe that most people love watching videos to be entertained, to uh, hear new knowledge, new opinions, uh, new ideas, a new imagination. But I want you, if you would for me, is change your definition of learn. Because people go, I need to learn to do this business. Well, again, if someone shared with you the way that they became successful and it inspired you and it motivated you, but you don't do anything, it doesn't change your behavior. You didn't learn Jack. You're aware of the information, but you didn't learn it. 
And so you'll see Craig and Matthew and I cover this in pretty depth in the podcast, because um, when you go to school, how many people believe that they learned the alphabet? Me. I know I did. And you know why I know? Because I was exposed to it. And then they taught me this song. A, B, C, D. Okay, so now I got it. And then they went through the alphabet and gave me the sounds of that alphabet. Are you guys hearing me? And so I repeated it. And it's pretty amazing that I'm still using it today. That's something I learned in school. Because it changed my behavior. How many people know what I'm talking about? But how many other things did we become aware of in school that we did not learn? I just want to give you guys the different definition, right? So all of a sudden, if we learn about, I don't know, the Constitution, but it doesn't change our behavior. We learned nothing. So there's a thing about, you know, countries where we talk about freedom. So what is your definition of freedom? Because regardless of what your definition of freedom is, is it changing your behavior? So how many of you go to work? See what I mean? It's like, so someone tells you to go to work and if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. Is that the def your definition of freedom? Somebody it is. So don't you find that interesting? So I just wanted to share that with you because the more that you can question yourself on what the definition of the word is for you, because for me, words are just as unique as my DNA. And so what one word means to somebody means something totally different to another person. And then we got these weirds way of communicating. Example, um, money doesn't buy happiness. I can guarantee you that if you took the words in that sentence, money doesn't create happiness. Do you guys find it unique that if we took 100 people and asked them to write a paragraph of what money is, they'd all be different. None of them would be the same. And if we wrote down the definition of happiness, it wouldn't be the same. So isn't it bizarre then if you reached out to somebody and said to them, would you be interested in making more money? why you would have an adverse reaction to that. <laughs> See, everybody wants more freedom. And by getting freedom, you could make a decision to earn more money. But then why doesn't anybody do it? There was a recent thing that was on the to uh, Today Show. Uh, and I don't know if some of you seen it. But they just went all out on David Wood that did this legacy affiliate program. Did you I, Have you guys seen this? All it, It's like all over. Um, you can look it up. David Wood, legacy, him and uh, him. Uh, he used to be one of the owners of Empower Network back in the day, right? And so I just find it interesting that they're going off on this kid when in his income disclosure statement, he says the chances of you earning income is zero. Now, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, right? And so everyone's mad that he sells a $7 program. But then when you get in, then he sells you a $2,500 program. And then as you're going through that, 
then they offer personal coaching and other programs, right? So everyone gets into being an affiliate marketer. And my, my, my wife and I were giggling on this because you, you'll see something. I'll share a story with you in a second. But immediately, it's like, <clears throat> you can't tell people that it's this easy to make money. Even though there's people that learn that information and when you want to make money, you don't have to do all this stuff we taught you. You could just be affiliate for selling this program. <laughs> and it reminded me, me and Terry were laughing is one, one, one time, Terry got an envelope in the mail. The, this will crack you guys up because you've seen it. She got an envelope in the mail. She opens it up. And it said, you can make a million dollars and we'll show you the perfect blueprint. Put $10 in the envelope and mail it back to the P.O. box. Now, why are you guys all laughing? All right. So she did it. She did it. Right. And it comes back and it said, being a millionaire is easy. Do exactly what I did with you and ask 10,000 people for $10. <laughs> Or maybe I, I I don't know is that is that really the number um a million dollars divided by ten I might be one oh you only need a hundred thousand people with ten <laughs> so not everyone will do it so we suggest that you send out a million envelopes. To get a hundred thousand, you see what I mean? It's still the numbers that that work. And um, if someone was dedicated to writing out an envelope, asking people for ten dollars to a perfect blueprint to make a million dollars by doing nothing but mailing this letter to everyone that's got an address book, how many of you believe in your hearts of hearts that it wouldn't work? None of you, none of you, you know, if you sent out a million envelopes to people, you know, so people would go, well, I, I don't even know what it costs to mail a million envelopes, you know, maybe that would be funny, but, but I, I can guarantee it's less than $10. You see my point? So, you know, I, I just bring that up because numbers are numbers. And I know why a lot of people don't act. They don't act because since I've been in this industry 37 years, you still have people that go, oh, my God, they promised me I'd make all this money. And then, you know, I came in and I bought the package and I went to their seminars and I plugged in to all this stuff and and uh, I didn't make any money. And my funny thing is. Well, I bought a Bowflex Bow Flex and I didn't lose any weight. And the first thing they say is, uh, well, you probably didn't get on it. And I'm going, yeah, and you probably didn't try to reach out to people every day. <laughs> to give away a gift, right? So I just wanted to share that with you because I know without a shadow of a doubt that if you plug into what we're doing with the inner circle and especially the imaginators and you can enter get that an imaginator back in gear that you'll no longer feel like i don't know what to do i don't know what to say i don't know what times i should call i don't know what kind of people to you know it, i believe in my heart's a heart that people could basically go out and say, hey, do you know anyone that would like to imaginate more? Um, what are you talking about? Well, I'm with a community of people and we all help each other imagine and enact our imaginator superpowers and people are just getting some amazing results. Wow. That... That sounds interesting because the reason that people don't go into action is because they always feel like they're missing something. 
I'm not enough. I don't know the secret. I don't, it's all of this stuff. And the reason that you don't trust yourself and won't go into action is because of a lack of imagination. So there we go. So uh, Craig, let's, let's open it up and, and um, help some people with their questions. That sounds like a great idea. And we already have three hands raised, Jody Falcon, Coach Bob. But first, we're going to go ahead and start with John Tier in just a quick second. For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, please go ahead and hit that like button uh, it, because it will help us share and spread the word to people with ears that hear. Also, when Robert was uh, bringing up the fact that you can join the Inner Circle or Imaginators, please go to roberthollis.com forward slash join. There is a link at the top on the YouTube chat. Uh, it, it, it says unlimited wisdom and then join the inner circle. You can also join imaginators by just clicking on that and then clicking on the link to download and get become part of our amazing communities. Now that we've got two of them, because, uh, Oh my gosh, you are in for treats with what we do and where we're going with those. And, especially the people here that are involved. So bless you all. Thank you very much. So Ola just raised his hand. Ola, you're going to be coming up too down the road, just acknowledging that. But let's go ahead and get started with Mr. John Tier. John, open up and please share with us. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Hey, Robert, you look like you got a little bit of a tan going on there, you know? Your really? skin is matching your 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 uh, logo back there. Kind of kind of shiny there today, you know. <laughs> awesome! Thank you, thank you. Like I said, you got the glow. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you, John? Hey, man, I'm wonderful, man. I am just really, really wonderful. Cool. Um, just really, I just got a quick a couple of quick comments. Um, we were talking about imagination. You know what? I imagined swimming fifty meters, and I did it. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. Yeah. Hercules. <laughs> and it was on the uh, the deep end of the pool. It was like the 13 feet. And so, uh, wow. yeah, we we had our class kind of shift around. And I was like, they said, well, you know, you could swim down there because you swim. And I was like, what, really? Because uh, uh, Dino, it, immediately Dino was like, no, you can't. No, you can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> but at the end of the class, one of the lifeguards said, one of the instructors said, I swim down there with you. And I said, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I quiet everything down, and it goes to like like goes to five feet to seven feet to like you know, eleven, twelve, and then thirteen. You know, <laughs> it, just, it just drops right off. You know, and I did it, and I I swam the the first uh, twenty five meters down there, and I was like, man, okay, I did this, and I said, you know what, I'm I'm gonna go back. I'm, I'm you know I'm swimming back. I took a little rest. And I swam back. I said, all I need to do is get to that line. I know where it's five feet where I could put my feet down. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got to the when I got to the line, I was like, you know what? It's only another couple of feet. Just keep going. So I made it all the way. And it was the first time I've ever done that in my entire life, ever. <laughs> ever. Wow. I, but, I, I, hope that, I hope you're proud of yourself. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It like sort of sort of it really makes you go. Um, when you accomplish things like that, and then someone says, well, you got to connect with a bunch of strangers and give them a gift and find the right ones, uh, sort of makes building an organization pretty simple. It's like, do you want to get thrown into the deep end of the pool or would you like to contact some strangers? I'll be right. strangers. <laughs> yeah. Strangers for 300, Alex. <laughs> Now, have you have you um, have you decided to jump into the advanced course yet? Um, you know they're trying to get me to join the the master swimming team. That they, they are, you know. I told them maybe in July. In July, it'll be a year that I've been swimming. So, wow. So yeah, I'll I'll uh, do it there and jump on the team because I'm learning. I'm learning the uh, butterfly right now. You told us that that yeah. is I, I'm, yeah, and I'm getting getting better at getting good at it actually i'm getting pretty good at that you know so a year of swimming uh what kind of physical physical things have you seen change in your body um my resting heart rate went down to 60 beats a minute wow <laughs> wow 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 not yeah. not even counting what you talked about here which is psychology psych psychology wise right you know what right I mean? right it's like so, uh 
Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people of a certain skin color that are deathly afraid of water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yet, and what's funny to me is that all the teachers are African Americans. I think, like, except with exception one, all about all everybody can swim. Well, yeah. I and See? that would be <laughs> that would be smart, in my opinion. Right. To have, have the you know, it's like, wow, there's another person that can swim. You know. Right. I mean? Right. Yeah. And so that's a myth. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Totally. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but so, man, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, John. Thank you. The the other thing is now I'm at uh, three thousand nine hundred and seventy uh, friends. You know, nice. Forty four hundred, a um, little bit over forty four hundred in terms of followers. Um, when I get to my close to five thousand, that's when I'll start working on my YouTube because I figured if I do both, I'm probably going to split my my focus, and yeah. and that and that that's just for me. You know. Yeah. But I figure that if I have close to 5,000 friends, that would be easier for me to get 1,000 subscribers because I have people I can to send something to, and now I can actually kind of bring them over. I mean, yes. if, 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 if I'm looking at history, you know, and the way that you, you built your YouTube, you first started with doing things on Facebook, and then you went to YouTube after you had done a significant... Right. That, that's right. what I'm just observing. And so I yeah, said, well... I, I look at... I still look at Facebook. I don't know how many active users they have now. I know it's over a billion. It's probably right. like two. But but um, I just love uh, Facebook because it's easy for me to instantly get a feeling off their profile. Now, a majority of the people that send comments to me... Um, that are not part of unlimited wisdom or part of, you know, the inner circle or, or the imaginator group. Most of them, when you click on their profile there, they don't have any subscribers mm -hmm. and they don't have any videos. So then the only way to communicate with them would be for you to click on, if they haven't locked up, click on about, and then you could send them an email. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is like, me going back to caveman days, right? Yeah, yeah. But but they don't, um, you know, there's not enough information to really gather, you know, whether there's someone that you would like to engage with. Uh, you know, Facebook, it's like, you know, there's three, in my opinion, three groups of people. You know, you see one profile that you know 100% is fake. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's just, they're trying to do their best, right? And then you got another profile that it 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 you can tell it's a good profile, but you can see that the person just is not utilizing it anymore. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people. That's me trying guitar lessons and then decided not to do it. It's like you know that's just right, it. right, right. And then you got the people that if they do have an active Facebook group where they can, I mean, page where you can see that they made any kind of comments, it's not hard to click on their photos. And then and then click on their post and immediately go, nah. Right. Or, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And I love Mary's video because the I just know that as you guys have imagination and say, I see myself with 5,000 friends. I also see myself with 10,000 followers, 20,000 followers, 30,000 followers. Because the biggest, biggest, biggest people that I know that are making an impact in the world, they they still are sending people to their Facebook page. And mm -hmm. I believe that they're sending people to their Facebook page because you can get a better feeling of what the person's about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you wouldn't be sending people to your first Facebook profile if you if it, you would want them to get, get the wrong impression. Right, right. Because I've had people actually send me messages, you know, saying, oh, I like what you're posting on your page, you know, and and those kinds of things, which means that yeah. you're actually checking out my profile. You, you, you're trying to decide whether you want to become a friend of mine. Yeah, or send me a friend uh, because absolutely. Or so if someone sent me a message on comments, you know, I guess there could be a way I told everyone I'm going to figure this out. So I, I haven't. So I'll give you guys a little bit of my thoughts immediately is. I believe that if you went to the YouTube homepage, like you would, you know, so you go to YouTube homepage, you now click on trends. 
And and you sort of look at the people that are doing the most posting. Mm -hmm. And then through there, you could click on a video. And then through there, like Mary taught on her video, you would look at the people that commented and maybe you could go down and again, see a comment that's very heartfelt, mm -hmm. make a comment to that comment. But then that would also allow you to click on their profile before you did that and go look at their YouTube profile mm -hmm. and see how complete it is. How many videos have they sent? How active they are with that and, and connect with them exactly the way that we connect with people on, on Facebook. Yeah. So principles so, is the same. The principles, yeah, the principles are, the are definitely the same. And, mm -hmm. and so, uh, yeah, congratulations, John. I, I mean, I could never get enough praise reports. That's for sure. Last comment and I'm go. Um, as I've been, you know, doing my meditation, I, I made a statement um a couple of couple of weeks back about, you know, can you still do this in like ten thousand in, in you know thirty days? And and I began to realize that that's a limiting belief on myself because you can actually make ten thousand in a minute. You can make it in a few hours. Yeah. It just it just really depends on what you believe about what what's possible for yourself. Yeah. It, so it's I've, a, again, I've taken that that limit off mm -hmm. and say, you know what, the next person I talk to can be the one that could take me to ten thousand dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. Bam, just, bam, just like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a time limit. It just is. Yeah. It's just the whatever, one thing whatever. that you guys, the one thing I don't know how many people uh, are on this uh, page is called businessfromhome.org. Uh, it, it's uh, Ted runs it. Um, that's where I got. Um, inducted into the Network Marketing Hall of Fame. Sure. And there's other people in there. And one of the things I want you guys to all know, if you just stay in touch with that page, you're going to see leaders like myself, some bigger, some smaller, that are constantly going just like athletes to one team to another. Mm. Okay, you're always going to see that. The other thing is you're going to see just how crazy amount of companies that are out there that are doing this kind of marketing. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, what you're going to see is if you clicked on total incomes, lifetime or incomes or the hall of fame, this notion in your mind that, um, you know, only, only the elite kind of people can do this business. <laughs> it will be, instantly shattered old young uh every religion every you know skin yes. color yeah. uh yeah it's just it's just again like the science of getting rich it breaks those barriers of you thinking that right and then lastly you constantly get to see people being promoted mm -hmm. so even if you focus on one company like i do i i tell people i look at multiple streams of income is each person that decides to be a people franchise and build an organization to supplement or replace their income. So I I already have, you know, probably 10,000 income streams. I don't, I, I want a hundred thousand. I want a million, but I look mm -hmm. at individuals like you would have multiple McDonald's or Mark, Mark, uh, right. or Starbucks places. Right? right. And so in that mentality, when you start realizing that, you know, there was a, you know, a new group that just came over to, to MDC from a company called Savvy. And if you guys go look at the leaderboard right now, um, the new girl just hit 25 K new girl just hit 50 K. And it's like, all you guys got to think about is someone reached out to Tom and Kim. And they were at the right place at the right time. And when they came over, they brought their entire team. No, right. they did one better. They went back to their owners and said, you need to look at this and maybe we can build an alliance. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. would it be worth, John, to consistently be reaching out to, to all kinds of people, asking them who they know that would be interested in replacing your income. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's yeah. definitely one it person, only takes one. <laughs> one person, one person can change your financial income forever. Right. Yeah. So 
that's the way to look at it. Absolutely, John. So that's it for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, a person was just asking me this the other day. And you guys know I know the numbers. Why do I know the numbers? The numbers are in my head all the time. They never, ever, ever stop. So if you had 14 people on your left and 14 people on your right, which would be a total of what? 28 people, mm -hmm. right? And they are all, all were on subscriptions for brand bucks, right? Mm -hmm. If you personally brought them in, you know what I mean? That's that's twelve thousand dollars in upfront income. It's it's uh forty one hundred dollars in upfront bonuses, and the residual would be over two hundred dollars a month covering your your monthly fee. Mm -hmm. So you not only would be twenty two thousand in profit, mm -hmm. but now you'd be making more a month than you're spending. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't someone look at that as a yearly goal? No, I think I could do that. And 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 uh, I think I could do that in six months. So would an extra $22,000 help you? Absolutely. <laughs> it's nuts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then people go, yeah, but I just don't want to do the numbers. So like Jim Rowan said all the time, what if you suck, right? And and that's 28, and you only could get one out of 10. Would I be willing to go through 280 people? See, for me, if you looked at me when I got involved in MDC, uh, the first month I got 81 people that to buy product, and it was 47,000. And I... I still just don't get people. I really don't. It's like, if you're going to put effort into anything and it's not using leverage, compound, residual, I don't know what, what you're doing is you, uh, you made a mental decision that you wanted to turn a great opportunity into a job. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Sales, sales, sales. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's mind boggling to me. Yeah, because when I look at an opportunity, I go football, baseball, singing. How many of you look at anything and immediately go, you know, I sort of want to be as close to average as possible? <laughs> well, listen, average people don't make money. Average people use things that other people make money from and they do it as a hobby. So I used to build race cars and the joke was always, you know how to make a small fortune in racing? How? Start with a big one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the 1% are the 1%. So if you decided that you wanted to do, you know, basketball, are you the kind of person that wants to learn from your family and friends and people that you used to go to high school or maybe co-workers? Or are you aware enough? See, ignorance means you don't know that you don't know. But once someone brings it to your attention and you continue to do the thing, you're stupid. You're just stupid. And you can't fix stupid even with duct tape. <laughs> so now you go into an opportunity and you're thinking, I got to find average people to manipulate, use closing skills on to sell a package. <laughs> Why? Well, that's how I get paid money. Oh, you're not interested in residual. I, I don't believe in residual. Yeah. Why? Because most people I bring in, they, they don't do anything. Is that their fault or your fault? Hmm. Hmm. Is that their fault or your fault? Right. Because mm -hmm. millions and millions and well, oh, sorry, billions and billions of people walk into a McDonald's or go through the drive-thru or have DoorDash or Ubers deliver them McDonald's. Right. Billions of people do that. Right. How many of them work at McDonald's? Hmm. Millions. How many people own a McDonald's? 
one percent. <laughs> so the numbers are the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never ever thought of that. Hey, if you guys want to look for people right now that might be looking for extra income, real estate agents. Do you guys realize that a law just passed that's supposed to implement in June or July, where they no longer get three percent? Their commissions now as a real estate agent has to be negotiated first. So it used to be, hey, John, do you want to sell your home? Yeah, 6%. There's a 6% fee. 3% go to the agent. 3% goes to uh, the broker. Not anymore. What are real estate agents going to do when they have to sit down with you as the seller of the home? Or the person's buying the home and go, hey, I heard about this law. Um, I guess I get to uh, negotiate my fee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So, oh, my goodness. You better be. That's not going to be good for a lot of brokers, a lot of agencies and, and agents. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like because they could figure out, well, if I get 3% of a $100,000 home, that's three grand, right? So, so I can sell X amount of houses. If I sell one a, one a month or two a month, that's that I know what my income is. That's no longer the math. No. The math is, well, I can find a listing and then before I list it and sell it, I have to negotiate my fee. And that's, you know what? Oh, that's, 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 man, you know, that means that they're, they're going to, they just created a, a feeding frenzy there when they do that. Yeah. Because somebody else is going to try to undercut what somebody else is doing. And before you know it, a lot of people are going to go, well, I'll do it for 1%. And other people, go, I can't do that for 1%. <laughs> and it's just, oh. man, you know, the strongest will survive. <laughs> so wow. I'll have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of agents and brokers that are no longer hobbyists. Right. Now it's really going to set a difference between who's really good at this business and who isn't. Right. And and you guys all, if you guys haven't, if you guys done a lot of res, uh, real estate stuff, you know, when we purchase another multi million dollar home in California, hunters are agent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This guy has been so great to the Hollis family. For years and years and years and years. And that's the people that are going to win. Yeah. People yeah. that went out of their way to build a good relationship with people. Mm -hmm. And when they think about buying, hey, Hunter gets my Hunter gets my deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it again, makes a lot of sense. Why you should be, able to be building lo long term relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that, and, and see, that makes a lot of sense because of how our world is changing subscribers are the way i mean too many yeah. too many every company is now trying to make sure they have subscribers yeah I, I did we bring this up in another call where you know terry and i went you know printer you know blew out we went to buy a printer and as soon as we went to buy it they go would you like to get on their subscription program i think it's i think it was like 49 dollars a month or something like that mm -hmm. and we go no thank you and they go, well, we need you to understand that if you don't purchase a subscription, your printers only has a 14-day warranty. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Talk about twisting, <laughs> strong arming. <laughs> and I'm going, what? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of things moving to the subscription model um, because um, it's definitely working. Right. It, it's definitely working. So, you know, try to put everything. I remember, uh, not to get crazy, but I remember the first time that Matthew said to me, because we would buy um, Adobe Premiere and then we would buy Photoshop. And of course, you know, I, I, I've worked hard to build this lifestyle, so I don't buy the cheapest of anything. I, I don't need a discount. You know what I mean? Right. So buying a renew copy of that product when it was like four or five hundred dollars. And then it was like overnight where Adobe said, um, now it's $49 and all our products are, 
you know, $49 a month, you get all the updates, you get all the new software, you can use it online. You know what I mean? You no longer had to buy, you know, this mm -hmm. thick, like five, you know, DVDs in there or CDDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For you people that are older, you guys remember the floppy disk, right? Yes. You know what I mean? We got the floppy. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I love where the world's going. Um, a really quick, quick testimonial for you guys, if I haven't brought this up. I love using inspirational stories. And so I recently used to tell this all the time to people that, and if I said this story before, just, you know, it's still a great story. But there was a kid that got his, got, a, got uh, found out a way to get to the United States. I forget what country he's from. Uh, you can Wikipedia this. And what he did is he needed money for college. So he created the 1 million pixel web page. So if you Googled it and put in 1 million pixel web page. So it was one page with a million pixels on it. And so a pixel is the size of a pencil lead. All right. So his thing is, is I'll sell it to you for $1, one price. That's it. So then people would buy a pixel and go, oh, I got to get a, I got to get a 10 by 10 to get it big enough. He sold it out and, <laughs> and it, it, it went crazy how fast it went. So in a few months, you can read the story on Wikipedia. I'm probably a little off with numbers, but he did it. He sold a million pixels for a dollar each and made a million dollars. Now, this is sort of like the pet rock. You know, these are things that, you know, that's only going to happen one time. I, I I don't know if you could really promote a million pixel web page today. The point is, is he used that money to get a degree. And, and I went, what happened to that guy? One day I just went, what a great story. <laughs> what happened to that guy? And Craig, if you can search that on, click on Wikipedia as well. And and find the mail, go on Wikipedia and you'll find the guy's name. So I'm in my mind, wow, this guy is not genius. And again, do you guys see how he got a bunch of people to give him one dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, and he made a million dollars? Alex Tew, T E W, a student from Wilsh uh Wiltshire, England, to raise money okay. for his university education in two thousand five. So then I'm reading the Wikipedia page and I just went, you know, remember the movie that used to be out there? Where are they now? You know what yeah. I mean? The one hit wonders. I wonder where they are. And I look at what he did and I just went, wow. So this guy decided to get out of college or probably in college. And he created the company called Calm, C-A-L-M, for mindfulness. Mm. And... You can get the app for free <laughs> and if you want to. He went out and took, you know, these uh, sleeping meditations. What he did is he started reaching out to some of the biggest names in the world. And it's like, would you like a sleeping meditation done by, you know, Kobe Bryant? Or Odell or, you know, it, it's crazy. I don't remember some of the celebrities that he read out, reached out to, but he goes, here's the script on meditation. Can you do it in your voice? <laughs> <laughs> Earl Jones, right? Earl Jones voice doing meditation, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, wow. Yeah. And I forget, Craig, if you're on the Wikipedia page, I, I forget how many subscribers he's got on Calm now? I mean, so on the million dollar homepage or Calm? No, how um, how many how many paid subscribers does C A L M have? Uh, let me find that out because I was trying to post up the Calm link. It's Calm dot com. Just to let everybody okay. know. Yep. And so, again, I was just verifying that. If someone on a day-to-day -day basis isn't building a, a subscription model, I I don't know how you're going to survive. I really don't. No, because that that is that is the I'm not sure what the word is for it right now, but that is what's going on at this particular time. Yeah, 
it, it, to, create, to create wealth is in is a subscription model. It's a new new business model, and and what people don't realize is it's uh it's far from new, right? Um, I pay my electric, I pay my internet service, uh, I I pay my bills on automatic recurring payments. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like it's like you know that's pretty smart that's that's pretty pretty smart that that you can sign up for a subscription for something and and never see a bill again yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. Again. and i the know calm it's app your... as of november 2022 has four million paid subscribers yeah so... anyone want to play math with me <laughs> uh we know the app isn't a dollar a month right we know it's more than a dollar a month so that's four million a month <laughs> uh have any of you ever heard a meditation you go on youtube go on youtube and put in meditation and there's channels that have billions and billions of views. Yeah. So uh, you, just, you just actually sparked an idea for me. I'll keep it to myself, but you sparked an idea for me just then. <laughs> hey, like, like, get a script, <laughs> put it in AI, make it more personal, and then <clears throat> <clears throat> take a deep breath in. Ah. Right. You got got to use your meditation voice, right? Yeah, that's right, <laughs> John. I'm sure you don't have any personal soothing music that could be a track in the background as you need as you're saying this. Yeah, John owns the rights to it. Yeah, did I mm -hmm. did I spoil your secret? Not quite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I have, I have so many. Listen, I have so many entrepreneurial ideas that, that come in my head. It's, it's you know, they're always bouncing in. I'm like, oh, I should do this. This is, I, I, I one as a child, um, I remember having a vision as a child. And because um, my dad, he used to want to um, pick people up and from the grocery stores. I mean, it's just something he wanted to do from his heart. Right. And I'm sitting on the stairs as a child. And all of a sudden, in my mind, I saw, Lots and lots of like vans and cars delivering, you know, groceries and all that. I that was back in, you know, 60 something. And and look what we have today. Yeah. Look what we have today. So ideas are always floating around in my head, you know. I I, and I had a friend that's reached, reached out to me just recently, Jeff. I think um we're gonna do like a podcast on on Monday. And I'm going to just start finding people I want to do podcasts with and throw some more up there with you guys. And Jeff said that one time he had to go to a business deal in Russia. And this was years ago in Moscow. And the traffic was so bad that they knew they were going to be at the meeting for a while. So they sent the car that took them there from the hotel to send it back. And then when they got done with the meeting, they called them and they said, well, with traffic, it took two and a half hours just to get to you. And Jeff was with this translator, this woman, and she said, no big deal. And said, follow me. She walked out on like the curb and put one foot off the curb and just started waving her hand. And this car pulls over and she looks in the car and it's this guy that's like in his 60s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and she opened the door, said something to him in Russian, and he nodded his head. And they jumped in the car and she handed him uh, some money and said the address. And he goes, uh, Jeff goes, what are you doing? And she said, well, it's, you know, people here because the economy is so bad. She says strangers use their cars and just drive around the city and picks up people like taxi cabs because they didn't have taxis there. <laughs> and and this is what she said she said you're waving down strangers glancing at them 
and then going yes or no. And then you say yes. And then you negotiate, give them the price and they take you. Yeah. He goes, that is the weirdest thing. Who would ever allow a stranger to pick them up? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, oh my God, this has been going on for years here in Russia. And it's like uh all of a sudden Uber comes out and you're like, what? What? Yeah. 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 Gary V, Gary Vertichek still says that that is his biggest, biggest mistake as an investor. That they came to him really early and said, Hey, would you like to invest in Uber? And he's going, No one's going to agree to have a stranger pick them up. Wait, we have strangers pick us up, deliver our groceries, <laughs> deliver our food, <laughs> deliver our packages. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's nuts. So always a pleasure, John. You always stimulate my mind. I, I really am proud same of you. Here. For Robert, your, same your here. Stuff. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> thank you. Okay. John, thank you so very much. Appreciate you. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Jody Falcon. Jody, I see your hand up. There you go. Please unmute yourself and share with us. Hi, everybody. How are you? Thank you, Craig. Blessed and highly favored and deeply loved. How are you? Exactly the same, maybe a little bit better. <laughs> uh, knowing you, that's probably the truth. So um, I have two questions. Uh, sure. First one, this morning I was listening to the Jim Rowan um, that you downloaded on YouTube. Did Matthew put that together? No, there's actually a guy when I uploaded it. I don't remember the guy's name, but Jim Rowan. Well, I'm pretty sure this is the way it happened. I'm sure the guy did the whole mixing of the music and oh, okay. the way that Jim Rowan talks. And then I believe that he submitted it to Jim Rowan and they got in some contractual uh, agreement. Wow. So it says their name. You know what I mean? So when I uploaded it to YouTube, it immediately said, you know, this can't be monetized because all the rights will go to the person. And it said their name. It said Jim oh. Rowan, something else. So uh -huh. someone professionally did those. And and uh, it's part of what you can buy from Jim Rowan someplace. Okay, well, for me, it had the flavor and creativity of Matthew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, get this. Uh, I said that to somebody just recently, and they said that. They said, oh, well, well who is it? Is it going to be Craig or is it going to be Matthew that find your one-liner holicisms? <laughs> yeah, and, for sure. And, do their little mixing with whatever kind of music in the, in the stuff. Oh, that would be wonderful. Hey. That would... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so here comes my next question. So I'm almost done with the book. Nice. I, under I understand, and this is a textbook. So I understand the bullshit rules, rules. I understand bliss, bliss. The plan, and I understand unfuckwithable. Okay. Now, what I'm having difficulty with, because after 45 plus years of it being ingrained in my head of smart means goals, and now I got to do this huge shift to yeah. what he talks about of end goals. Okay, right. so yesterday I finished chapter nine and I have my blueprint for my soul. Good. And I put the timer on for three minutes for each of the categories. So may I read just one example from each category to see if I'm on the right track to Absolutely. get an end goal Absolutely. mindset and not the Absolutely. means goal? Okay. So for experiences, an end goal would be having fun with Francesca and Francina at Lion Country Safari is total happiness. Uh, for Okay, for a growth end goal, um, becoming a better version of myself every day is fulfilling. 
Right. Um, and then for contribution, um, always having plenty of cash in my wallet to give to those I see in immediate need is happiness for me. Very good. Those Very are good. end goals? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. End goals. On the right are, path. And here's the fastest way to determine between a mean and an end goal. Very, very okay. fast. Um, I would like to get a new reliable car. That's what I'd like to get. The end value or the mean value of that is um, I would never have to worry about whether or not it started. What would what would it feel like to know at any point in time I could get in the car and it would go? Uh, second one, um, people would look at me different. Mm. If I went to any of my friend's house or my family that's still alive, um, or I went to a meeting, you know, people are like, damn, nice car, Jody. <laughs> so how would that make you feel, you know? How does it feel when you pull up to an intersection and someone looks over at you and goes, <laughs> see, so the, the goal again, or what I call them now is imagination. Everything. Yes, so when you sure. imagine, I'd like to have something, the, the real, it's like, it's like, believe it or not, there's a really good study that's done on this about asking questions. Right. So a majority of the questions that people ask you and some people take these as uh, ob not objections, but yeah, objections It's like, you know, I don't have enough money or I don't have enough time or I'm not a people person. Usually when people ask you questions like like, you know, is is this legal? Is this a pyramid? Is this a scam? That is just a statement. It's not the real question. Um, you see okay. what I mean? Uh -huh. So, so, so what if you knew somebody or you yourself had been taken advantage of in the past? Mm. So you don't like that feeling. So if a person wanted to dive into that and someone said, well, is this a scam or is this a pyramid? If you wanted to deal with that values, those value, you'd go, well, Jody, if I can ask you a question, did you ask that question because maybe yourself or someone you know have been sort of hurt before by by something like this? Usually the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So right. they couldn't explain the definition of a pyramid or a scam if their life depended on it. But the real issue is, you know, my ex-husband got me involved in something and I brought all the people in that I loved and they all lost their money. <laughs> you see what I mean? So Right, exactly. But when they say, I don't like things like this, see what I mean? It's like objections is really not the deal. So now think about when you set any of your imagination. It's interesting to know why you would want 10,000 paid subscribers. That's obvious, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. What else, would, what else would it do for you? Um, I wouldn't feel despair anymore. I have a professional take care of my taxes, taxes and accounting. I'd have everything set up on auto pay. So I don't know how much money I'm making and I don't know how much things cost. <laughs> See, real, real freedom. Yes. So if I had this cash flow that was always coming on uh, in because I helped a, a bunch of people, you know, so everyone's looking for that magic ten thousand uh, dollars a month category, which is one hundred and twenty grand. So now if you had ten thousand paid subscribers that you made a dollar from. Or five thousand paid subscribers that you're making, see what I mean? Two dollars from. This now becomes something that that is tangible to people. That now that you're imagining, so when you can get into these uh, emotional side, yes, of the imagination, 
Mm-hmm. That's where magic. That that's where magic comes from. Exactly. It, that's it, the magic sauce. Yeah. It 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 changes us in a chemical way. Mm-hmm. It you know so having an imagination of doing something is like you know I think that people just don't realize again like we talk about the imaginators is we're doing it all the time. And and you know people just got to get back into that part where if they look at a home and they say, oh my God, wouldn't that be nice? That's a nice home. Wouldn't it be nice to have a home like that? And then not have Dino come behind there <laughs> and then start throwing rocks at it. You know what I mean? One yeah. of my funniest things that I used to do in front of large groups of people is I would show them how how they'd imagine. And I go, so let's say, let's say that you're at an intersection. And all of a sudden, this sort of loud car with a good exhaust pulls up. And you look over, and the woman in the car is got to be 19 or 20 years old. And has the body that allows her to wear just as little as possible. <laughs> right? And what are your first thoughts? What's your first imagination? And people go, uh, daddy's girl. Um, she's probably in the oldest profession in the world. <laughs> um, she married, she married uh, a sugar daddy. <laughs> See, there's not one part of your imagination that goes, wow, she's an entrepreneur true that because if we said she's probably an entrepreneur she learns skills to build a large following on instagram and she makes millions of dollars a year see if that's what we would say that it was then we don't realize that we're beating the hell out of ourselves well how did she get a large following on instagram posting content. Well, I think that's stupid and I'm too busy and I'm a nobody and I don't look like that. And I'm not that smart. You see, we just, again, Dino comes out and just beats the shit out of us, which is really us in our own heads. And that's when you look at people and go, you know, how many people do you have on social media following you? I, I don't like social media. What? <laughs> See what I mean? So there's yeah. people that don't like the internet. There's people that don't like social media and there's people that don't like AI. But it is funny that the people that are really, really fulfilled and enjoying life. I mean, my wife and I, whether you guys like them or not, I just love watching success stories. And so it talked about the Paul, Paul brothers, you know, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. And here's two brothers. I don't know how far away they are, but I think they started doing YouTube videos in like 2006. And it's not one of them. It's both the brothers that make millions of dollars a year. That's beautiful. And they make podcasts now. And, and, uh, there was two guys in Europe or something or England that wanted to fight both of them. So that's when they decided to make an amateur fight against four YouTubers. <laughs> Little problem. Um, they got it for pay-per-view and they made a little over $8 million from four amateur podcasters that decided to fight each other. Wow. So now all of a sudden the boxing world is going, you know, these guys are just scammers, they're whatever. And so then Jake decides to start hiring. A, he makes millions of dollars. So he pays a million dollars for a boxing camp. And he finds the best of the best to teach him how to box. And then he just started calling people out. Wow. Goes in the ring, knocks them out. And so everyone's going, you know, the kid's a total scam. And Mike, Tys Mike Tyson said they sold $60 million in pay-per-views. 
no one holds a gun to your head and makes you pay 50 or $70 for a pay-per-view. Well, now he just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so recently he just called out Mike Tyson and now he's going to fight Mike Tyson. I saw that. Now get this. This is when you got power. When you start promoting something and Netflix calls you up and says, what we want to share it with 100 million subscribers. Hello. <laughs> so we're talking about 10,000 subscribers. You know what I mean? And so these kids started out with nothing, but they built such a large following of them doing stupid stuff that that propelled them. Now his brother is doing Prime, the Prime Energy Drink. And now oh. it's sold in Walmart and it's the fastest growing new drink that's ever hit the market. Oh my gosh. And it's like you and I, Jody, come up with Jody water. <laughs> we got to find people. We got to get millions to invest. We got to do all this stuff to go against all the other waters out there, right? What if you already have 40 million people following you? And I say, listen, I'm going to give a little bit of charity. I want all of you to change your water to Jody water. Bam. So that's why Mr. Beast is selling chocolate bars and cookies. If you really look at what these guys are doing, you can buy Mr. Beast's chocolate bars at Walmart. Jeez. You can't get in Walmart or Target or Costco unless you're selling millions of dollars of stuff. So in that documentary with Jake Paul, he says, I'm just doing YouTubes. And all of a sudden this guy calls up and says, yeah, we'd like you to, um, we'd like to sponsor you. He goes, what does that mean? He says, I was too young. I put my dad on the phone. And he goes, well, what kind of cost would that be? And they said, listen, um, how about how about you talk about our product and we'll give you $200? And he says, I remember like it was yesterday. My dad covered the phone and they went, are you? <laughs> he did like, these guys, what? I just have to talk about the product. Hey, you need to pick up your Dino tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> Buy Dino at, you know, whatever. And, and he said he did it and it was successful. He wanted it to be successful. And he said it was like a week later and someone called him up and said, hey, I seen you were shouting out the Dino. You know, I have a teddy bear. How much would it cost us? And I just told my dad to go for it. And he goes, well, we're getting a lot of demand. It's going to be 5,000. And the person went, I need your banking information. <laughs> you see Corky up there going, that that that's the way it works. So why wouldn't you want to take the time to build a bunch of like-minded people and just go, listen, we all need to figure out how to monetize our life. We all got to figure out. Show them again, Corky. It was small. And un unmute yourself. What are those? These are pudgy penguins. Probably most of you haven't heard of them. They're a multi-million dollar company. They paid me $1,500 to set them on my shelf. I didn't have to say a word. And that's, and I have, oh, I, I have, I have other stuff too. Pudgy um, penguin. Pudgy penguins. Yeah, there was an ATF or ETF with it too. They have a, I, I didn't know it, but you're not supposed to take these off because it makes them less collectible. It's or like something. beanie babies. Don't tear the tags off. What right. is I've got, right? That's what I didn't know. Um, I have big one, bigger ones, but they are, they come bigger. These are the hook on kids' deal. But no, I'm doing a thing with Timu also, which is the app Timu. It's yeah. not a big deal, but it's still, it's just something It, you know, it grows. It goes. It totally grows. 
Thank you, Corky, wow. for that up. And I have check out, uh, check out Corky Santa on TikTok. <laughs> All right, thank you. But thank no, you. it's it's real. The the subscription and followers thing is real. Yeah. Keep building, just keep building. Yep. Love you, Jody. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. So the imagination that you have, figure out when the imagination that you have comes true, what are the emotions that it's going to create? The more feelings that you can add to the end of your imagination, what it's going to be, winning the golden ticket. And if I get the golden ticket and the candy bar, I get to go to Willy Wonka. Right, right. And, and also, also he said that the end goal, that feeling you have, you need to have it now. You don't yeah. wait until yep. the brand new Jaguar SUV is in your garage That's before exactly, you enjoy it. Yeah, exactly what he's talking about in phase four of the six phase meditation. Yeah. Yeah, you have to... And and that would that's what turns it into something that's actionable. That's when we go into action. Is is when we're constantly feeling the feelings like it's already here. Yeah, and I've been experiencing exactly that since yesterday afternoon when I wrote these. Yeah, and it's like what I mean. It's maybe what it's kind of like electric inside my totally. veins or something wow and the and the only thing that the only thing that destroys that as you guys know is getting distracted to start saying you know voices come out you know jody this is never going to happen you know you're too old you know you you can't relearn new stuff you know learning from you is you know is difficult and you got to say listen shut up imagination allows things to happen for me that doesn't take any of the skills. That's, you know, still to me, listening to anything from Abraham Hicks just puts me in a loop. Because oh, yeah. there's, there's like a statement that she'll say is like, so when you have the imagination of something, then you need to make it, allow it to come to you. Mm -hmm. There's no... Every, take get away from everything of the resistance. There's not something you need to learn. There's not something skill that you need to have. There's not X amount of hours that need to be put into it. You don't have to call X amount of people. See, so we go, man, having $10,000 a month, what would be the feelings of having that kind of feeling and security and, and not worrying about my retirement? What would that be like? And then what we do is mess it up by go, okay, I, I love that feeling. Um, so I need to talk to uh, 78 people in three hours a day. See, we just destroyed. We just destroyed our imagination. Yeah. Because we take what we think, listen to me, think, not feel. We just took it from a feeling to a thinking. Yes. Um, I have to tell like, you what well, Robert, Robert can attract leaders, but I can't. Well, Robert attracts leaders because they see his income. Not true. So everything that you set up that you don't have is you destroying your imagination. Well, I got my blueprint for my soul. Nothing else counts. <laughs> yeah, saying. But like this ain't thinking, this is feeling. Uh -huh. you know? So thinking doesn't make it so, emotions make it so. Correct. So then we think of the wrong way. What does it do to our emotions? Huh. Uh, I was just, I was just being stupid thinking that I could do that. Yeah, and you can just actually feel, I can feel myself being drained of yes. life it, when I the, go down it, that path. The the spark leaves immediately. Yeah. And it, here's the spark. Uh, I don't know how many of you are going to go out and get a lottery ticket today. What would you do with the lottery money, man? $800 million? 
Okay, so the electric electricity of the emotions is, man, I see this stuff in my account after taxes and everything. What am I going to do with that money? Wow, I would do this for my mom. I would do this for my siblings. I would do this for orphans. I, I would do this. I would quit my job. And you go into that imagination of, wow. And now the time comes and you whip out the ticket. And they start saying the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like then the the Powerball number, and you look at it, and you go, "Crap!" Same thing, same thing. And then what do you say? What every other person does? I can't believe I'm so freaking stupid that I spent my money on this. I I got my car. I I drove all the way down there. I waited in line. I'm so sick and tired of myself. I'm so gullible. I keep following into this stuff, <laughs> right? I ain't doing it anymore. And it comes out, you don't, and you're proud of yourself. And then it gets to 300 million. And then it's like, well, that's no big deal. And then all of a sudden it gets to 500 million. And it's like, wow, well, I'm pretty sure someone will win it today. And then it doesn't, and it goes to 800 million. And you're like, Baby, this is the time. <laughs> it, Why not? It were, it, 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 don't you guys find it amazing that we're just on this giant roller coaster in life? It's just like, <laughs> you know, you're going up. It's like, damn, you know, that. <laughs> through the loops, through everything, and then it just stops. And your first thought is, wow, that was fun. What is your second thought? That was too short. Man, right away. It's scriptural. Do you guys know this? You should be ready for it. As soon as you get into the right emotions, the right frequency, the right vibration, the tractor beam, as soon as your imagination on emotional level gets there, it says that it comes to steal it from you immediately. Should just know when you get in that tractor beam, all the Darth Vader energy is going to do everything to push you out of that tractor beam. Oh, yeah. And just be aware of it. If you're aware of it, and then you go, I ain't doing that. I no, I ain't. I see you. I see you. Shut up. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, I had some really interesting conversations internally um, when that kind of shit happens. <laughs> yeah. And and isn't it crazy that a majority of the people on the planet just keeps these thoughts to themselves and they think that they're weird? No one ever takes the time to tell them, hey, I don't know if you knew this, but everyone has those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Do they really? Yeah. So I'm not weird? Because we use the same emotionals for negative. You know, I'm so lonely. Why doesn't anybody like me? Why do I always give to everyone, but no one? If someone's going to talk to someone, I'm reaching out first. They're not reaching out first. Maybe I should stop giving. No one cares anyway. And those are different feelings. And now we're using imagination in the wrong way which I'm now calling hallucination. Yeah, All you're for doing sure. Is hallucinating. And like the post I posted that today that Craig talked about, worrying, anxiety, all this stuff is just you using your imagination in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> Jody, thank you so much. And tell Yaya, sorry, but we will definitely get him in the next time. He might be so on that, YouTube. That, yeah, that as is long as he's on YouTube, way, that's fine. That, that is a great way to say it, too, is just tell people, listen, I'd like to invite you on the Ask Me Anything. Please, when you log in, put your full name. You know Perfect. what I mean? Make sure it's in, yeah. in the 
uh, display name. Yeah. Okay. That's the important thing. You you'll have your full name on the on your channel, but it's the display name that we see here when inviting people in. Okay, and I think I understand. Where we see Jody Falcon. Exactly. Yeah. Got gotcha. gotcha. Thank you. And, and for some of you that might know that you're going to have someone on here, uh, maybe I make a suggestion and send a message to Craig somehow saying, hey, I invited this person and this person to be on. Uh, please look for them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. That so would be again, yeah, yeah, I, I apologize that happened. We just have to, we have to protect ourselves from, hey, do you guys know that live, L-I-V-E, Spelled backwards is evil. So if you're not leaving, living, just, just. Wow. Ooh. Little, little quick download. So when you're not living, you're usually focused on something opposite. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Food for thought. Hey, if, if I got Craig going, that, that emoji, right? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could probably make an emoji out of this face, anyways. With the Easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, Jody. Appreciate it. And by the way, pa uh, Peter and Linda did post something in the chat I want to share with everybody. Please. Um, please. With regards to doing things, and you know, we've been talking about YouTube also. Uh, if you like doing it, there's a good chance that someone likes watching it, mm -hmm. or else you wouldn't get the call to do what you like. Brilliant, great, great. That 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 needs to be on a bumper sticker. Yeah, Peter and Linda, thank you for helping us and uh, sharing that with us. We appreciate that. That was very good. Again, if you haven't seen it, I will post it in both chats. So thank you very much, Peter and Linda. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's see. Time to continue forward with our next person. Ola, you're coming up. But first, Coach Bob, go ahead. Coach Bob, unmute yourself and please share with us. Hey, Robert, Craig, Matt. Hopefully you're having a blessed uh, Saturday. Yeah, and, I am. How about you, Bob? Awesome. Awesome. Always. And oh. uh, I'd like to shout out to Jody and John, the, the accomplishments and the things. It's really good to hear that they're, they're moving forward um, with their the things they're working on. So my question is, is I want to build off of what you were talking with, John, you know, um, and like, you know, getting that a person like that savvy on your team. Right. right. So w when I contact people, when I call, when I cold call or message people, um, can you give me some tips on just, I've been doing that lately. I've just been messaging people, you know, just, good, good. so I take, I take uh, a, a certain time in my thing and I go until uh, Facebook tells me I can't go anymore. Right. And I message them. <laughs> Good, good. So, good. Um, and then I get some back, right? Um, I'm sure. just wondering, it's probably about one out of 50, right? Maybe, maybe two out of 50 will come back and they might be interested in it. Okay. And um, it, can you give me any tips on like cold, cold messaging people and uh, how to follow through them with that? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that, one of the things that I use, there, there's a phrase out there that just is so powerful is always less is more. Always less is more. So in my creative thinking, Bob, I think, wow, what would be the fastest way that I could connect with another human being? So I just ask myself questions out loud. Okay. And so, of course, could I take the things that I would do in public face to face and bring them into the social media world? And my answer is absolutely. Absolutely. So if I were to see you, what could be some things that I could do to first connect with you? But when I do connect with you, immediately I give you a compliment. So let's say that we're both at, you know, uh, Wild Wings, whatever that place is, that sports bar, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I walk by 
And I go, wow, that's a that's a nice hat. Where did you get that? Okay, so if I complimented you about your hat, is there any way that you can build a faster connection? Right. Okay, I get you. Right. So that's how I do it. So let's say that I'm looking at, I'm on a page like Secret, right? Or Rhonda Byrne or Bob Proctor. I'm always thinking, you know, where would people come that want more in life? So I'm, I'm thinking about the pages that they might go to that would want more in life. So this allows me that if I joke, this is a joke, but if I went to, um, I hate people that like Trump page. Sure. That might not be the people that I'm looking for in my organization. <laughs> right. Or a whole page of I hate Joe Biden. See, right. I'm looking at their comments. So if I go to a place like Abraham Hicks's page and I look at the comments and I make, I see a video or whatever she did, and then I make a heartfelt comment, not to manipulate, I truly, truly, truly mean it. So I'll go to people's pages and I'm doing this on YouTube. I People crack up because... I've had comments come back to me. You know, I've never, ever had anyone leave a comment on my YouTube channel. <laughs> right? So we know how many people watch a YouTube because we see that on views. But why can you have 10 views and no subscribers? Right? right so right. this is honestly, Bob, the way my mind always, always thinks. What would be the fastest? So when I ask myself that question then i see people on youtube that walk up to somebody and they say you know could you hold this rose for me no they just hold out the rose person grabs the rose they bend down tie their shoe and then they get up and smile and walk off and then as the person realizes that someone just gave them a rose without saying anything to it they sort of reach out a little bit to give it back to them and they notice there's a piece of paper on it. And they open up the piece of paper and the piece of paper says, don't ever forget how much you're loved. Have a great day. Wow. And I'm going, okay. So I first make a heartfelt comment uh, on someone's post. And I'm going to see if anyone that's going through all those comments see mine and make a heart or make a thumb up or, or make a comment under my comment. So when you do the comment, maybe it should be something that would solicit that or that or a comment. See what I mean? Yes. All right. Okay. So then once that happens, then I can immediately reach out to them and go, Hey, Coach Bob, I really appreciate you liking my comment. Are you seeing where I'm going? Yeah, uh, exactly. And I know you've you, talked about this before, but. But, it, but it's clicking now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now, if any one of you have ever had someone make a heartfelt comment on something that you posted, I just want to ask you, how does that feel? Good. Wonderful. So the thing that I want, I do for others. You guys, this is my secret. This is my, so so then I see that you made a comment on my comment, right? Well, then I'm going to go through everyone in that post that I like, and I'm going to find the people that didn't just do this or just do this, but they actually left some a comment on somebody else's comment. So now I'm going like, wow, Coach Bob, I really appreciate what you said about this post. It really got me thinking, continue to keep being who you are. It actually allows you to tap in to a part that a lot of us don't practice on every day. And that's a sincere compliment, saying nice, being encouraging to other people. So now when I do that, almost 100% of the time, I get a heart back or a thank you back because I made a comment on somebody else's heartfelt comment. I, I'm seeing you getting this now, yes, right? Uh, all right? 
And then when you do that, I will put in the comment underneath there, hey, Bob, I, is it right? I, I would love to connect with you. Can I send you a private message? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, well, I really appreciate you doing that. You seem to be the kind of person I'd like to be connected with. And because you gave me that, I, I'd like to give you a gift. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Got it. All right. You're just giving me a gift for no reason whatsoever? Sure. I, I am. Now, it's how they accept that gift that puts them in the next category for me. Okay. Okay. Are you, I, was, it, I was missing, I was missing a step in there and that, that was the, you know what I mean? And if yeah. you don't do it just right. Right. And a lot of you have seen me in a public setting. If you haven't, you know, then I'm looking forward to that. And the one thing that I always get, Bob, is that, oh my God, when I met you, you were so present you made me feel so incredible. Uh, I know that I'm just not a number to you. And this even happens with people that are not in my business. So when you're like that on social media, it just sets you apart because everyone else is just copy and pasting <laughs> and going through people as fast and quick as I can. And I've always said the statement, Bob, and I know that you've heard me say this, but it's, it's something that I teach people, which is a little note that, you know, the way I taught Melody and everyone is just constantly have a note someplace on how would I feel if, and how would I act if. So you're going through your messages and then you go to the request part and you see me with a profile that's new with no post on and it's hello. <laughs> Look at all of you. You're like, but there's people that teach this method. Oh yeah. Well, why would you create a fake profile? Well, because I don't want my real one to get cut off. Why would it get cut off? Well, because it gets reported for spam. Why would it get reported for spam? Excuse me. I've never given a message. I, I've never given a gift on social media and have them turn me into Facebook. Right. So it's just these extra things. Like even now that I have, you know, a lot of followers, when I send people birthday messages, sometimes that's 30, 40. 50 people. Facebook never shuts me down because it's not happy birthday to 50 people. It's Bob, comma, you are a blessing, explanation mark. You know, have an amazing day and year, explanation mark. Happy birthday, explanation mark. If I know you and you connected with me back and forth, love and appreciate you, question mark. I mean, not question mark, uh, explanation mark. So now when I'm communicating with people, there's something different. I'll get halfway through the list, like 10 of them, 12 of them. And then I just switch the, the things. Happy birthday. You are a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I go through 10 or 12 more. I just move the sentences around and go down. Sure. And it's like Facebook never like, you know, this guy is, and I, I'm, I'm not, I don't ever see how fast I can do it either. I will allow my superpowers of uh, HADD, always dealing with distractions in a hypersensitive way. And I use them for my power. So then what I do is when I start getting distracted, I just allow myself to be distracted. And now I'm doing a little bit of posting on LinkedIn. And then I'm doing a little bit of posting on Instagram. Then I'm doing a little bit of posting on, on, on X, you know, Twitter. Sure. 
And then my mind goes, I should do the post for the day. So then I do the post for the day. And then my mind goes, oh, you didn't finish, finish the birthdays. <laughs> so I'm not like this intense, crazy time of sending messages to people. So now that I've developed that, it's like I'm sending those messages, heartfelt messages on post all day. Not in an intense time. It's just part of what I do. Sure. So when you guys notice that you get yourself something to eat, you get yourself something, uh, some water, you, you go to the bathroom, you get up and walk a little bit. That's me and my schedule. So, but because it's when I get up at 7.30 to going to bed at 10.30, I'm doing this all day. Sure. Click over here, over here, over here, over here. And I'm just sprinkling a little bit of imagination all over the world. That's awesome. So do you, do you have a certain time block that you get that all done in Robert? Do you like say, well, I'm going to get this or do you just filter it all in a day? Cause I usually just do a time block for like, cause I don't want to spend too much time trying, on social media. When I was trying to build, um, trying to use the words here. When I was trying to build, um, consistency when I was trying to build um, um, the discipline to do it. Yes, I did put sectors of time. Okay. Yeah. And, and it wasn't until it's just what I do all day, every day. Okay. See what I mean? Sure. And so when I got into it and got evidence that it worked, like you, for instance, you know, you have evidence of what you're doing works. So I don't think that you find a hard time doing it. Right. I, I, I that my hard times on things that I don't know, you know, like, like uh, the Facebook, but then when I get my other stuff that I do, like websites and stuff, yeah. I just, it's uh, all this other time, right. That yeah. I just come up yeah. with things and create and you and imagine you know already you know already if you could 10x the amount of people that hit your site oh it 10x is your income right, right. it's like the right. you know so that's the only difference you know i'm i'm i i was taught to truly look for people that wanted to make six figures a year okay and and it, it's interesting how people respond to that. You know, well, who do you know that 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 would like to make six figures? I, I what do you do? I I help people monetize their life. Monetize their life. Yeah, is there anybody that you like on social media? Yeah. Well, while you're looking at their stuff on social media, have you ever had them share with you in a link? I have. Why would they share a link with you? Well, because they 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 love the product. Do you think when you click on that link and buy that product that they get anything? Oh, I know they they do. And that's okay. Yeah, it is okay. Why aren't you doing it? I never thought of that. It's got to be difficult. It's not difficult as a selectic auto mechanic that makes up words can share affiliate links all day long. <laughs> you guys like that? Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Bob? Yeah. One more quick quest question. Sure. Do you mind if I, for Craig? I'd like to know what he's working on. Is he just helping you out? Or I'd like to see things that, that he's imaginating and he's coming up with. <laughs> I'm I'm going to put you on the spot here, buddy. Oh my gosh. Craig is so multifaceted. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Um, I am also, in addition to helping Robert and Matt grow the channel, uh, I do a couple of podcasts uh, not just with Robert, but with a group called Vaudacity Network. And then uh, 
as well, another goal, you know, similar to what Matt has with building him himself up. I'm an actor. So yeah, I, I definitely am uh, right now uh, trying to get an agent. I have a manager and uh, you know, one of the goals that I envision that I visualize, imaginate myself having is an Oscar oh. or an Emmy. Um, You'd be okay with a Tony. I, okay. Yeah, I could do it. I could do a Tony <laughs> actually. Yeah. Uh, then I just got to figure out a song, which I've got a couple that I've done on the Vaudacity Network that I could get the Grammy. Then I got the EGOT all squared away. That's the the four. If you're if those of you that are not familiar, it's uh, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. They call it an EGOT, and there are a few people who have yeah. who have are recognized as having the EGOT. It's kind of like the uh, what is it the thirty 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 club in baseball. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but I would be very happy to get, you know, just either the Oscar or the Emmy or the Tony. So that is my ultimate, but you know what? I do love doing this and sharing with people and helping Robert, helping other people, um, do things. I'll, if, you know, I'll make sure that I post, you know, the next shows that I'm on with Vaudacity. So if you would like to watch, um, they do come up deep cuts, uh, Polly's online variety show and a couple of other things. And, oh, and, and the Cove podcast, which I do help with, and I share poetry on that particular podcast. Wow. Where's oh. Jamie? Wonderful. Where's what? Yeah. Yeah. Jamie. Well, I read the poetry. Oh, I, God. I'm, I, I have, it's been a while since I've created poetry, but, um, it's, it, I love reading the poetry and, but in the case of Jamie now, Jamie has, you know, I love, I would not mind reading Jamie's poetry, but it needs to come from him because he's the creator of it. And he happens to be here when he does that. So it, it's better and, if it comes from the heart good. and he's good. And he's at good. It. Yes, Exactly. <laughs> So I, I thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, well, Bob. I, I just, uh, yeah, you know, I, you're like a guy you're here all the time, but you know, it's, it's so interesting to find out about you more. Um, I went to your website one time, watched all the videos and, uh, uh it's phenomenal, but uh, all right. If you want, I can go to, I can share my, uh, actor YouTube channel. There's a couple of videos on there of things that I've done recently for something called SceneBot which uh, it helps to promote actors. Okay, fine, Peter and Linda, I will, I will. I'll post it up as soon as I'm done here. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, if you went to Craig A. Jackman, I believe, dash actor, if you looked that up on, uh, on YouTube. But I will post it in the chats here and uh, so that you guys can find it. And okay, this is maybe my imaginator post. For everybody, since we do post up people's uh, websites. Uh, so, yes, that is exactly where I'm headed. But I love, you know, the, Robert and I have been friends for so long. And my feeling is I want to help him get to the next level as well. So, it's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, Craig is, um, <clears throat> you know, you always hear these people that are good at a lot of things. Craig is good at a lot of things. Uh, Craig is also great at a lot of things. He's great at um, putting events together. He's got incredible imagination for what the set should look like and what the theme is going to be. Um, he, he, he uh, you know, he, he's he's a great uh, collaborator, but he's also a great, uh, you know, he'll find all the things that are needed, you know, to make sure that the audio and the video and and the theme and then an, an amazing MC. Uh, you guys see what he does here. And um, he can get he can get people on their feet and he can get people jacked up, man. Uh, and and, um, you know, that's 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 someone that can set the tone and set the energy for a live event. Uh, he just shines, shines, shines there. And so when we first went, came over to MDC, 
they wanted me to do something on stage. And I told them that, yeah, I'll do it, but not without my MC. So, so Craig, <laughs> Craig at the first convention that Terry and I were at, Craig was the MC. And uh, I did not know at that time the close, close relationship that Josh and Jenna had with uh, um, uh, Chris Robinson. So they're like best friends, you know what I mean? So I right. didn't know that Cannabis Cowboy, you know, <laughs> did all their stuff since then and did them all after, you know? So it was pretty cool that I was able to sneak Craig right in there. And, and uh, but Chris Robinson is, is um, such a natural, mm -hmm. you know, but what was difficult standing up and 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 telling everybody how much you love an individual and what you've seen them do for other people so craig craig has got yeah he's just a he's just a super giver you know what i mean he's just a super giver big time that's awesome yeah we like to hear more about him so that's why i, I asked thank um, you Bob. yeah thank he's such a great he's thank such you. a great guy and i'll save my other question for matt uh for the uh for the other meeting. Okay. Imaginators. Cool. So, yeah, we gotta uh, get Matt, we gotta get Matt going on his own YouTube channel. So you guys can go on there and ask him questions. And and it's like uh when I hear Matt go off, it, it not only stimulates my imagination, but for me, um, I'm so proud of him. And so I'm I'm missing what he's saying. And I don't know for those of you that have children that you understood what I just said. So it's like watching them shine is what I'm connected to and overwhelmed with. And I just keep forgetting what he's saying. You know what I mean? I'm just watching him perform. And uh, <laughs> oh, I... it, it will be soon, trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love you. So yeah, thank you, Bob. You're always yeah, I love you so much. Yeah, yeah, you and Craig and and Matt. And sorry, Ola, I went a little longer, jump before you, but thanks I'm so much. I'm gonna get yeah. you to stop apologizing for stuff. Have a one, yeah, I know, I can't. It's just one I bad habit. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a bad habit. Yeah, get rid of it. You all can't. right, I'll, I'll, all right, all right, all right. Love you if guys. You, if you knew, if you knew, I'll give you one. What's your favorite sport? Uh, baseball. Baseball. Okay, a guy hits an infield, an infield uh, um, on, right? Right. And then he runs the first base, but he doesn't touch the bag. Wouldn't that be stupid? Yeah. That's what you do all the time. <laughs> You come up with great questions. The adder at questions that you ask are benefiting millions and millions of people. And then you go, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I said, sorry that I took his spot before me, not, not on anything but else. When you say you're sorry and you apologize for doing something that helped millions you just threw it in the garbage. Yeah. All right. I get you. So when you, yeah. So when you pull questions out of me and did what you just did for Craig Jackman, which was incredibly heartfelt. And then you said, I'm fucking sorry. Well, because I took all the spot. Actually, you did, oh, you, did you did not. You did not. <laughs> Okay. You were ahead of Ola. All right. I'm not going to say that. I, I'm going to work on that. Um, there's things I have to work on. Yeah, yeah. you were ahead of Ola oh, in know, the tier, even but though I you did away step away. <laughs> but I kept your spot. Now, if if yeah. Ola had our, if you had been gone <laughs> and Ola was here, Ola would have gone and you would have followed. I gotcha. keep track of the order. I know. I know. Okay. All right. So, I, but, I totally so, understand so you guys. I, I, I said it nice a couple of times, and I now say that you and I are close enough friends where I want to, you hold up the red card and I'm going to reach out and slap you. And you're going like, okay, I, I, I might keep up this apology tour. I'm just not going to do it when I'm talking to Robert. 
I'm not going to. Yes, I won't do it at all. Yeah. Yeah, because it's that it's that it's that trigger thing that we do. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. it's just like saying the word, but I used to do it all the time. I always didn't feel. I didn't feel like what I was doing with somebody was worthy. That it was enough. And so it's like, it's like also this part, Bob, not to beat you up, but it's like when we do something for someone and then we say, we're just kidding. That that's the way I would do it. I would say, Hey, Bob, nice hat. And then you go, thank you. And I go, just kidding. <laughs> that all right but but yeah that's just one of those things that you can change and you just say you know i i say to whatever you believe in you know um i need you to interrupt me i need you to put a thought in my mind to stop from stop making me apologize for doing something that was worthy understand <laughs> i love you brother thank you i love you too man thanks for getting on me someone's well, got to well you're a coach right <laughs> yeah you're, you're a coach yeah I thanks love you, guys yeah i love you too Bob, thank you. Love yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Yeah, you thank know you so much. I appreciate that. I oh, really we really love do. you so much, man. That that was awesome. That was really awesome. I thank you for doing that. All right, Coach Bob, thank you again. Uh, hola, thank you so much for your patience. You are up next. Please unmute yourself and share with us. Oh, and but before hola, you start. I just I do want to acknowledge. Um, oh gosh, where is that? We Thomas Booth for his donation in the super chat on YouTube. He clicked on that dollar sign with the uh, square around it in YouTube under the chat and you, donated. Bob. All donations will go to the charities that Robert supports. If you want to donate, click on that little button there and you can go ahead and donate. Thank you again, Thomas Booth. We appreciate you and we love you on that. All right. Ola. Go ahead, unmute and share with us, please. Ola from Sweden. And I am so sorry, Ola, for misspelling your name earlier. I will correct that. Awesome, Craig. No worries. <laughs> Hello, How Robert. You How you doing, Ola? Really, really good. How are you doing? I am blessed and highly favored and deeply loved. Awesome. Uh, first of all, I, do you know where I got that, Ola? Yeah, maybe from your first mentor. Yep. Yeah. So exactly. I thought if my mentor said those things every time someone asked him how he was doing, and he's a multi, multi billionaire, I'm one of those silly people. You guys are going to know I'm silly. I thought, wow, that's a great thing. I should never use it. <laughs> or, Wow, that's a great comment to say. I think I'll change it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't get that gene. I, I that when someone's doing something successful and they're getting a great response from it, and it changes the way that people feel and act. I just go, wow. I, I how would I act if, and how would I feel if? And I thought it had that great reaction to me. So I mirrored it exactly. And look what it's done to my life. Yeah. And so I reached out to people. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's like, come on, really? Is that is it that hard for you to duplicate? No, it's not true. So when people say hello, we go hello. You know what I mean? I just thought, man, I'm gonna find out what the happy fulfilled people do, and I'm just gonna do that. 
So how are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. How is that? <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. So what's going on? How can I help you? Um, yeah, now my question. Yo, first of all, I want to thank you for the interview. It was so thank much you. fun. It was awesome. And uh, second of all, I want to say that uh, uh, you're on point with this imaginary stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Because I have thought about it a lot. And uh, when I think back to my life, everything I wanted to succeed in, like taking a driver's license, like uh, learning how to uh, skateboard or uh, anything, I imagined first. And then yes, I took did. action. Yes, yeah. you did. And, and now I imagine, uh, what if, uh, when? I know how to uh, just find people online and just build this large group of people. And, uh, you know, I start imagining every day with a six phase meditation. Wow. And I know it will happen. I know it will happen now. So, uh, I yeah. did little Thank things. You. you guys will crack up for some of you that don't know this. Um, my daily choice used to have sort of like a, a, a separate leaderboard. And that leaderboard would show you know, who was super affiliates and who was 500 Ks. And then it would even list the super affiliates like one, two, and three. Right. And I screenshotted that and put Terry's name above that and put her as number one super affiliate. And I go, I imagine myself getting up in the morning, I'm logging into MDC, then I'm going to the leaderboard, and wow, Terry Hollis is number one super affiliate. And I thought, what is it gonna be like when we show up at a convention and they're handing out awards and my wife gets on stage? and accepts this award, what am I gonna, how am I gonna feel? What is it gonna do for me? Because I got my sons on stage. Why not get my wife on stage? Fantastic. And so thinking about the way she feels about money is my wife does not like to think about money. It's not her. And I said, so the only way that I can get my wife not to be concerned about money is that she's got months and months and months of living money in her own personal account. See, now this will probably go against a lot of people not understanding, right? But my wife gets paid from the corporation that I created. So all the money that I bring in goes into an organization called the Hollis Organization. And Matthew and his wife and my wife, all these people are part of the Hollis Organization. And then my accountant pays them. Then sends them a W-2 and then also takes care of their taxes. So now my wife doesn't even, can you imagine, ain't that a great word, right? Yes. Can you imagine that my wife hasn't asked me what's in her personal account for years? So what did I do for my wife? My wife can go anywhere at any time and spend as much as she wants anytime she wants to. And I I, I I, made this comment one time at an Eric Worre event. As I said, how many, how many males in the room want to turn their girlfriend and their wife back into the person they first dated? I go make sure that they don't have to worry about stuff. Women love security. 
if you make a woman secure, she'll she'll do everything for you. True. And she's got a bunch of money in the bank. And so what should she spend it on? She spends it on me and her sons. Wow. So that was my imagination. And I put it together very fast. Yeah, I know. Really fast. <laughs> so all day, every day, I imagined doing something for my wife. Okay. Because I, honestly, I don't need to do nothing. Yeah, But I, I got to take care of my family. I have to make an impact for other people. I feel I made sort of a deal. My deal was if God would help me and get me out of my financial situation, that I would spend the rest of my life showing other people how to get out of theirs. So I'm still honoring that deal. Because what can be given can be taken away. So I want to honor my deal and keep making it bigger and bigger. And in the part of doing that is when I found the, the joy in giving. And I just thought, man, I had one guy that challenged me. He's a billionaire. And he said, you need to focus on what you're going to give a year, not what you're going to make a year. So then I wrote out my best charities. And I said, I want to give this amount of money to this group and this amount of money to this group and this amount of money to this group. And then, you know, the universe or whatever you guys want to call it, the the, the imaginator, the chief imaginator, is um, that already knows my heart and knows if I get X amount that I'm giving X amount. And as soon as I made that pact, that's when Angel and Matthew reached out to me and asked to meet me. They, they said to me, can we take you, can we buy you lunch, is what they said. And when I said they could, um, they go, where do you want to go? I said, Jack in the Box. And they're going, well, that's not a very expensive place. And I said, you asked me where I wanted to go. It's not about money. <laughs> So we went to the Jack in the Box and then they shared with me the dream of building an orphanage in Jamaica and India and asked me if I would support. I said, absolutely. I was asking for this. And that was back probably in 2009 or 10. So... Thanks for bringing that up. I'm proud of you, Ola. I'm super proud of you. Are you muted? I'm sorry. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yep. Sorry, someone called. It was Nicholas. But, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I said this on to you on a voice message. But, man, if your goal was just to believe that there's people that have ears to hear. I just don't think that every anyone imagines. See, we we God, we're so we beat ourselves up and we're so self-destructive. So what we do is we focus on all the people that we know won't do what we're doing. Yeah. It's 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 so bizarre when yeah. numbers tell us <clears throat> that there's millions of people that want to make six figures. Yes. Millions. I'm not talking tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people that are sitting around going, damn, man, I bought into this lie. I got the education. I got a couple of hundred thousand dollars in debt. I went out and got a job. I worked my ass off. I sacrificed my lunches, took short lunches. I don't take breaks. I, I get there early. I stay there late. And I've been here for five years. And I still have roommates, man. 
someone someone really freaking lied to me really really bad so now all their focus is on this is the way it is everybody's like this and there's people out there that just go man this is bullshit because I see these guys on Instagram, I see these guys on YouTube, I see these guys on TikTok. There's a group of people out there that are not living the lie that I'm living. And I got to find someone that can share with me the information of how to escape from this, this shit. Exactly. And so when you find those people, because I was like, oh, my God, I was the most high paid auto mechanic I knew. And it wasn't just because of my expertise, it was my work ethic. And now I got a doctor telling me I can't be a mechanic anymore. So my thoughts were this, Ola. How long is it going to take me to learn a new career? To make this kind of money. I don't know how to do nothing. So I knew that I didn't know. See, so I knew my thoughts, my knowledge, whatever I had, my wisdom or lack of wisdom, I did not know how I was ever going to get out of this situation. And that's when I sort of yelled out help. And I just said, man, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever needs to be done. And then I have this guy that I met a couple of times say, hey, I met this guy that made 62 grand a month. I seen the check and he's looking for people. And I'm like, I'm that guy. I'm the guy that he's looking for. <laughs> and, and it reminds me of that on Wall Street, you know, uh, deal where he goes up to him and says, is that your car out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You live in my apartment building. Yeah. How much did you make last month? Mm, I made 62000 You show me a pay stub right now. I will quit my job and I work for you. Why does everyone believe that those people still today don't exist? They do. Because now you see Chris Williamson or this Alex and they got... 1.72 million people on their YouTube channel. And when you hear Chris Williamson say, my God, I, I'm not interested in making 250 million on a contract with Spotify, like Joe Rogan. But if I did three podcasts a week and just kept gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder, and I'm going to get, get gooder, and then people are going to see my interviews and then I'm going to get more interviews. See, like right now, you could reach out to people and go, hey, have you heard of Robert Hollis? No. Well, I just recently interviewed him. Can I interview you? And they got a small following. And now they yeah. come over and watch the interview on your two, on yours. And then they see our interview. And then you get another one. So he did three podcasts a week for three years. What what is that? That's <laughs> that's not so that's 52 times three is 156. Uh that's 156. I said three years, right? Okay, so like three times 12, right? Three times 56. You guys gotta help me. Three times 56, 52. Three times 52 weeks in a year. I mean, a year, right? Yeah. Yeah, then times three years. He did 468 podcasts. And one of his podcasts went viral. Everybody said, who is this? Came back to his YouTube channel and 80% of his subscribers came from one podcast. That's uh, mind-blowing. Because of consistency. 
just putting up content. See, that's what people don't want to hear. They go, I'd like to build a following of subscribers and I'd like to get those subscribers to do a paid subscription. I just don't want to do content. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Daniel, you got to take that times three again because it was doing three podcasts a week, right? Or times three, yeah. So <clears throat> when we talk about our industry, any industry, say right now, every industry has the same thought. How many people can I get on automatic payment? Yeah. Netflix, I guess Costco does it yearly, right? Get the Costco card for the year. It's like, well, how many people do you have in your group? Honestly, I don't have anyone in my group. Well, how many people do you connect with? I don't like doing that shit. It's stupid. It doesn't work. Well, then, then why would you look at people that it is working for and just say that you're never going to be good enough? That's why Mr. B said, people reach out to me and go, what do I need to do to build a YouTube channel? He says, do 100 videos that are more than 10 minutes. And then when you get there, give me a call. Because most people won't do that. You know what the other funny part is, Ola? People that no. do that, people that do that no longer need his help. <laughs> they go, that I got it. I got it. I was consistent, giving away, connecting with others, making them feel good. I just kept doing that. And then one person went, Ola, listen, are you working with a guy that makes a million plus a year doing this? Yeah. Who wouldn't do this? I know, right? That's what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Ola. I really am. Thank you very much. Anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, no, not right now, I think. Yeah, just imagine, you know, imagine 10,000 subscribers. Imagine 10,000 paying subscribers. Imagine 10,000, you know, subscribers. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm working for. Every, everybody knows what Netflix is, and a lot of people are customers there. So... Yeah. Of course, you can have a lot of subscriptions as a business, you know. I See, a, a lot of people, I believe that everyone has imagination, okay? So when yeah. people first get involved with me, I believe that they imagine that they can earn income and have freedom. Yeah. But a lot of us are not consistent. We don't really build our imagination enough. So people get in. And they even know what the minimums are. So they go, as long as I keep my account active. So every 60 days, I guess I'll go in and buy like a, a prepaid travel card because it's the least expensive thing in there. And I'll do six BV so my account doesn't get eliminated. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of those people. So if you have... 6,000 people that do 2 BV. Yes. That's 12,000 in BV. Yeah. Get that? And yeah. then I get 15% off that 12,000. That's two grand. Awesome. People don't think about the minimum. Then I got some other thousands of people that they're always getting ready to get ready. You know those people? Any of you know people that are getting ready to get ready. So yes. they see the volume underneath them and they don't want the volume to purge. So then they do $40 in personal volume because they, God, I don't want this, all this volume, this carryover. I don't want it to disappear because one day I'm going to pull my head out of my ass and do this. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go in, I see more people added, more people added. So people are doing it. People are getting rank advances. I just got to figure this out. 
I'm missing something. I don't know the right script. I don't know how to copy and paste to the right people at the right time. Been there, so done that. Through. Then they go from coach to coach, mentor to mentor, uh, uh, book to book, course to get, yeah, and they just keep trying a bunch of things instead of being consistent. Isn't yes. that crazy? So then it's really I got, crazy. I, I, I got uh, maybe a thousand of those. So a thousand affiliates doing 40 in volume. That's 40,000 in volume. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's another four grand for me. Yeah. Then I got people that go, I can afford brand bucks every month. And I'm going to figure this damn thing out. So that's me. I have 500 of those. So that's 500 times 100. That's 50,000 in volume. That's five grand. Yeah. I don't think I've ever said this to people. So I got my free people that do nothing. And then I have free people that come in and bring in somebody and they do something. I still get paid on the volume. I get paid on the little volume. I get paid on the middle volume. I got people that actually buy the same product on subscription every month. Oh my God. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And out of all of those people, I got some people that are always 1Ks. I have some people that are always 5Ks. I have less people that want are that are always 10Ks. I have less people that are always 25K. I have less than those that have that are 50K. But they do it every month like clockwork. And so if they're a 50K, they're at least making five grand a month. That's sixty thousand dollars a year. That's freedom. For me, it is. That's more important to me than the money. It's how you make yeah. the money. Yeah. So why would I focus on all the people that don't want to do anything? Ridiculous. Yeah. That's why I give away a gift. I get them to know, like, and trust me. And I go, Ola, I'm in this program, this affiliate program. Listen to this, man. Um, if you were the person that personally brought in my wife, in the last six years, you would have made like 1.3 million. And all yeah. you did is introduce my wife to the company. So if you came in this company, I'm not telling you that you need to invest money. If you feel you should do it. But if you could just introduce me to other people that you know that want to make more than they're currently making. If you could just introduce me to people that want more freedom than they currently have. We find one, you now make 30% off their residual check. We find two, doubles your income. Yeah. Hey, They're Robert, awesome. I talked to this yeah. person. I talked to this person on social media and they wasn't interested and they tried to pitch me on another company. Um, why are you telling me this shit? Well, I thought maybe I said something wrong to them. No, they're the wrong person. Yeah. So if you walk up to somebody and say, hey, yeah, I'd like to get to know you better. Can we go out for a cup of coffee or a drink? And they go, get away from me or I'm going to tase you. You 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 don't have to call me and say, <laughs> I talked to this person that was mad at me and said they were going to tase me. You don't have to tell me about the people that are not interested. Those are easy to find. Yeah. So if I have to go through 5,000 people to find Candace Bird Davis, it would be worth it. Worth My it. God. <laughs> if I got to go through another 5,000 people to find, you know, uh, uh, Tomas Istvan from Hungary. It was funny. They were. Yeah, you guys will crack up. Do you guys know that they ha they're having a big event in Las Vegas, right? 
Can I show yeah. you guys something funny that it'll just crack you up? So there was a picture that was, uh, let me, let me just make this bigger. I'll, I'll just download it quick. Okay. So I'm in this group that's, that's called mastermind Alliance. All right. And so they were posting pictures and videos online about the event in Las Vegas, right? And then Judith, uh, Judith posted in this picture and said, uh, "This is what I'm. This is what we're doing in Hungary." Nice. Do you guys know that I, I I'm I I'm I'm not at that meeting? Did you guys notice that? Yeah. So this is our pod, hit 150, I mean 100. And this is Judith, she hit 250. And Shandor's probably there someplace. And if he's not, that means that this is a not in Hungary, that it's probably in Romania. Because uh, AirPod is from Romania. 100K. 100K in volume, making about 10,000 a month. And he's in Romania. Our pod is the flipping rock star in his country. Because a hundred thousand in the United States is a lot of money. A hundred thousand yeah. or hundred and twenty thousand in Romania. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys know, do you guys know that Hungary and Romania are the two poorest countries in Europe? Yeah. That might be a thought. See, people keep saying, you know, why would I do business in the poorest countries? Well, because they have hungry people that want a better lifestyle too. And Ola, you understand the Europe mentality. It's almost easier to sort in, sort in Europe. And I'll tell you why. Because... There's a lot of people in Europe that don't know how to imagine. Yes. Because everything's just standard, standard flow. Government sets the rates on everything. So you can lose your hope pretty easy. True. But what happens when you get one of those people that were hopeless and now they imagine all the time like you? Magic. Yeah. Now you say to people, hey, who do you know right now that just seems like they're always a daydreamer, man? They're constantly a daydreamer. Because that person sticks out in Europe. Yeah. That person sticks out in Africa. Those people are, yeah, I know this idiot that, you know, he could almost be uh, homeless, but He's constantly selling something and he always is dressed in a suit. I want to talk to that guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk to the people that are complaining. Exactly. Way to go, Ola, man. Watch, Thank you, guys, you, watch, you guys watch Ola climb up the compensation plan, man. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Thank you for all your help. I love you, man. I'm proud of you. I love you, too. Thank you. Honored to be your friend. Okay, Craig, let's close this out. Absolutely. And Ola, thank you so much. Um, for those of you, I have posted the link for Ola's interview with Robert in the chats. It's a great interview. You need to watch it. I implore you. I ask you, please, watch it. You will like it very, very much. Um, so, and that link, as well as others that we've shared during this uh, uh, Ask Me Anything, are in both chats. They're in the chat for YouTube. They're in the chat for Zoom. You can download the Zoom chat by uh, clicking on the three dots associated with the Zoom. Look to the right of where it says Ask Me Anything in the meeting chat. And then click on Save Chat. It will download to your computer afterwards. 
For YouTube, it's either in the chat or it will be posted. The links will be posted shortly after this is done. I'll make sure that it gets in the description section below the video, especially when you watch the replay. Hint, hint, hint. If you missed anything, please do that. Uh, shout out to James Mullaney, who has also helped to donate to the uh, uh, Super Chats that Robert has. Uh, James, thank you very much. The money will go towards the organizations that Robert supports. Shout outs to all of our participants today, in addition to you watching. John Tier, Coach Bob Johnson, Jody Falcon, Santa Corky, Ola Meyer. Big, big shout out to Matt. Hollis. Matthew, bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for being our executive producer and the foundation behind everything that we do here on this channel. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Ask Me Anything with the A Amazing Robert Hollis. Until next time. Oh, and tomorrow, tomorrow, for those of you uh, that are imaginators, we have our Imaginators call, and it's only Imaginators. So you need to go to roberthollis.com forward slash join if you are not an Imaginator and join us. Lots of great stuff will take place tomorrow as part of the Imaginator call. You need to be a part of it. Please join. And as Robert likes to share, get connected. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I seen I seen Peter run out of the room. Is the ah look at him? There he is. He's got his yellow one. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very very much. And click the link at the top of the YouTube chat. That's where you can go to RobertHollis.com forward slash join to become part of either the Imaginators or become part of our inner circle. So. Until next time, please be good to yourselves. Be cash. Bye-bye. And now I'm going to click the unmute to those that are watching on YouTube or I mean, sorry, on Zoom so that we can all say so long. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye. Great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Take Peter, care. Linda, Bye. John, Bye. Coach Bob, Jody, Luna. Bye-bye. Oh, Imaginators. Bye -bye. I said, thank, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Ola. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Bye, 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 James. Hi, Jay. Hi, Mike. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you. Hi, Hi Kai. Daniel. Thank you for your math, Daniel. <laughs> Jody. <laughs> thank the you, Church Melody. of the thank Imaginators. Hi, Diane. Uh -huh. Thank uh -oh. you so thank much, Robert. They don't Mary. like your. Bye. They thank don't you. Like your thank you. Butter, thank you. Huh? <laughs> Who, who, where's the, where, where's the talking about? Who said the peanut butter one? <laughs> All right. No one's yeah. claiming it. Okay. Whatever.